Welcome. My name is Dawson Church, and I'm so delighted to have you here. Every week I do this, and it's one of the high points of my week, and those who write in and share their experiences, it's one of the high points of their week as well, because there is so much amazing stuff going on now in terms of personal growth, spiritual growth, transformation, and the whole way that science and spirituality are coming together. It's been a remarkable confluence over the course of the last 20 or 30 years to see that ancient techniques, ancient discoveries like the depth of our meditation, being in touch with our breath, having our minds clear, centering ourselves, grounding ourselves, all of these things that seem so esoteric a long time ago are now being shown to have dramatic effects in our bodies. I know I was just preparing for a presentation on science and spirituality, energy healing and material healing that I'm giving for an upcoming conference. And I was looking at some of the newer research. It shows that our genes change, that literally gene expression is being driven by things like the quality of our thinking, things like the deposit of Alzheimer's plaques, beta amyloid plaques, tau plaques in our brains is governed primarily not by genetics, but by the quality of our thoughts. There is the research showing that gratitude has tremendous effects on our bodies. Things like stem cells and telomeres multiply when we're grateful, when we're happy. So I encourage you every single week to hear what we're up to, to listen to the research, to listen to the inspiration you hear here, and then apply it in your life. So do that meditation practice. I was on another show this week. I'm usually on three or four shows a week. And at the end of that show, I literally held up the entire show and made people grab their phones and program in half an hour meditation tomorrow morning as a recurring event. I said, now, when Google Calendar asks you how long it's recurring for, just define it as my lifetime. <laughs> the rest of my life. And you will see things shifting in your world so quickly as you do, do this. As one great meditation teacher has been on the show a few times said, Andrew Vidic is his name. He said, you might see things happening in your consciousness soon after you begin a meditation practice, but you will definitely see things happening in your world, in your relationships, in your finances, in the quality of your relationships with people in your, at your, on your team, in your place of work, for example, with your health, with your body, it's your highest leverage point. So I really wanna encourage you to hear the things you hear on the show and then make time, make space to apply them in your life. It can make all the difference. My guest today is Wendy, De Rosa, and she's the author of the new book, Becoming an Empowered Empath. She's been offering education and training for over 20 years and helping people see empathy and their empathic gifts not as an obstacle to being in the world, being in the real world, but as something that empowers them to share if it's handled and respected and has the proper boundaries. So she's done an amazing job of, of putting that in, into words, into her program, into her book. And you can find out more about her work at wendyderosa.com. And that's D-E, not D-I. So Wendy, D-E-R-O-S-A.com. Wendy, wonderful to have you here. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Dawson. It's an honor. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to have you here. And as I was reading the book, I was so struck by your personal story and how it didn't begin well. I think for many empaths, <laughs> it's yeah. pretty difficult at first until you learn to navigate that territory. So please do share with us what that voyage of discovery was for you. Yeah, so I was, uh, I was, I was a, raised in a very big family. I had, uh, I had seven brothers and sisters. I was the oldest girl and really early on took on a lot of responsibility in my household, but I was also very sensitive, very, I was intuitive, but I didn't have that language back then. All I knew is that I could feel, sense, see, hear, kind of know, you know, I felt a lot as a child. And then 
um, growing up, what that ha what happened is that developed into anxiety and depression and eventually a series of panic attacks and lots of uh, over responsibility and energetic overwhelm to a point of what I call a nervous breakdown in my late tw late teenage years. And um, it, it was, you know, it was a combination of feeling this gift was emerging. And at the same time, a lot of conditioning in place that put me in this role of over responsibility. And that was my, that was my early onset of my empathic experience in the world. And I eventually learned that I had a gift and I could train and develop it. But until then, it was pretty debilitating. Yeah, and I think many people have the same experience. They don't know why there's no framework for this beyond taught or trained when we're growing up that this might be a characteristic of who we are. And so it's often, as in your case with that, that breakdown, it's a painful series of steps to discover that. And then I'm so thrilled now to see so many people discovering those gifts. And there is now a place for that it's a society. So of course you train them, you are training people through Mind Valley, you're training them at Kripalu, you're training them in various places. And now, of course, where we recognize that these are gifts and that we can share with people how to actually use them with other, other people and not have all of the negative imp impact on their lives that there was on, on your life early on. So I'm so grateful that a society has changed and we're figuring this out. There's a place now for all these people with these gifts. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, consciousness is rising. It is amazing that we are, we have more awakening here for it to be easier to talk about this. I mean, when I was having the experience, you didn't say the word intuition. You know, it was, it was an under the table word back then. And now, you know, it's, it's a little more uh, common. Yeah. 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 And then you talk early in the book about the need to develop boundaries, about, about how vital boundaries are. I know for me, Wendy, what my, uh, my kryptonite is big box stores. So Home Depot, Costco, Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> and so my wife reminds me, I, I do Donna Eden's zip up and hook up before I go into those, those places, do the zip up, do the hook up, and then I can kind of create an energy bubble around myself. But until I learn how to do that, I, I would be like ready to just collapse after about 15, 20 minutes in those places. So um, you, you, you really stress the importance of learning energy boundaries really, really quickly. Yeah, you know, and, and actually it starts with the energetic body. I mean, what I talk about significantly in the book is that we, we didn't learn in school, we learned the circulatory system, we learned the nervous system, the respiratory, but we didn't learn about the energetic system in the body and how much it underlays so much, that it underlays the nervous system and all the systems in the body. And so what our experiences in, in, you know, taking care of ourselves energetically in the world is about having some awareness of what's, you know, what's happening beneath the physical and system of the body and the systems that are more common into our energy body and understanding that, you know, so much of the empathic experience in the world relates to what we're holding in the energetic system of the body. And learning that opens up a whole doorway to a lot of tools and ways to take care of ourselves. And of course, that's also the way you are perceiving, you're perceiving energetically in other people you meet. And originally, as you are in that space of perceiving those things, you don't know what this is, you don't know that it's one energy perceiving another energy. And then after a while, you can learn that and then you can move into using it for healing and wellness. I just love that, that, that evolution that you, you talk about in the book. Um, I marked a number of passages to, um, to check in with you about, and you talk early in the book about being too empathetic, being overly empathetic. Go ahead and share the, the, the pitfalls of that. So, well, I think it's important just to, to differentiate a sort of a term that gets merged together, a concept, which is that empaths will say, I'm an empath, therefore I take on the energy of others. And there are actually two different experiences that are happening in the body. The empath 
feels the energy of other people and is able to, you know, offer service, offer a kind word, offer empathy or compassion to the individual. But the taking on of other people's energy basically means that here's my auric field and energy has now crossed over into my system. And there's there's a reason why that happens. There's several reasons why that happens. And I go into it more in the book, but part of the experience in our energy system is that when we are depleted on some level, which has to do with our our chakra system in our body. I work with the chakras and talk about them in the book, but essentially when we are uh, not enough prana moving through the, the lower chakras in particular, and the spirits a little bit higher up in the body, we end up somewhat disconnecting from the lower chakras and not, and that's where a lot of our empathic experience happens is when we're not necessarily grounded or connected lower in the, in the energy body to hold our presence and to hold our boundaries in the world. And so um, there is a way to be empowered and, and embodied as an empath, as opposed to having these reoccurring overwhelm, energetic, over, overly empathic experiences. And then how do you teach people that? So part of it is part of it. It's beyond it's deeper than just tools, tools that we'll do to protect our energy or to be in our body. The, the tools work and they will help. But then there's a deeper dive. And the deeper dive is in. in and again, I go into this in the book is about understanding what is happening specifically in the energetic system, particularly in the root chakra area of our body, where we carry a lot of conditioning and what I call our early childhood marinade, like what we grew up in. It's the energy we absorbed. It's all the subconscious beliefs that we carry that we marinated in pre-verbally you know, before there was cognition. And, and, and when we start to, we carry that at the root of our system and that determines our sense of safety and belonging and our existence and, and empaths, we need to feel safe and belong in our bodies and grounded in our bodies. But when we're been raised in environments where literally the safety is compromised on some level, the root chakra contracts and at that point, the second chakra in the pelvis starts to open up significantly because its job is to be empathic. Its job is to feel the subtle of what's going on. And so it starts to compensate for the sense of safety by taking care of, overly caretaking everybody's energy around us. And sometimes that means peacekeeping or over caretaking or taking responsibility for. And that ends up, that's basically when the, the energy body moves from feeling safe and grounded and connected into hypervigilance. And it's in that hypervigilant state that empaths end up, it, it's a pattern. We end up learning it very young to survive. And then we repeat it over and over again in life in order to exist in, in, in what's normal. It's not like from the heart upward, we don't want to be doing that, but the lower body has a mind of its own. And so this, this programming that's going on in the lower chakras, essentially empaths start absorbing subconsciously. So how we work with that is again, getting grounded in the body, breathing into the lower chakras, unfur you know, softening in the root chakra, starting to get connected down in this lower area of the body. So there's more of a sense of safety and grounding and embodiment. That's wonderful because in ancient times, usually people used to go away into special places like convents and monasteries and um, special hermitages where they could go have that uh, ungrounded uh, upper chakra elevated spiritual state and they weren't really grounded in the world. They had to go not be a bricklayer or a carpenter or whatever they were before. They had to go and leave those, those lower chakra responsibilities like money and security and then go and have that, that experience. Now, what is so different about our era is that people can have those experiences 
and embody them. So I love that emphasis that you have on, on embodying this. The other thing I just want to say too is, is money. It, uh, even 15 years ago or so, people in the energy healing community were so ambivalent about money. And now some many people in our, our practitioner community, I know are really confident that they'll go and talk to a business, they'll go talk to a sports team, and they'll be offering their services and they'll have no trouble navigating the money conversation. And so that again, means that they are embodying it in terms of billing, in terms of professional confidence, they're talking to doctors and nurses and psychiatrists and people in, in, in hospitals, they're able to be, be professional. So that's kind of a, not just a, a personal movement from those upper chakras to the lower ones, but actually the whole of energy healing, I think, is going through that kind of transformation. Yeah, I think so too. I, I mean, there's they're seeing the value in energy, yes. in, in the energy medicine and energy work. They're seeing the value, the benefit. People are healing, people are evolving. And so, it, yes, I, I feel the same way. It's way more integrated now than, than it ever did when it, we were... A little more acidic. <laughs> <laughs> you know. yeah, tend to take vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, go to the monastery, go on a three-year retreat, do three of those, and 15 years later, you've gotten somewhere. You can get somewhere now without, without all that. You know, one of the things, the things that intrigued me too about your story was that it wasn't linear. And so you said that when you first began to discover and apply these principles, that you often would have swings in the other other direction and you would find yourself being dragged back into anxiety, depression, worry, fear, all of those things. And then you'd rescue yourself for a while and you'd be on the upswing, then you'd be on the downswing again. And I think that's really worth emphasizing here, here to those who are listening to us because uh, it's not a linear path very often. It often is that kind of a zigzag route. Yeah, I've, I mean, I think it's what has allowed me personally to develop as a healer is that it's not is to embrace my humanity and to have vulnerability around the, the, the limitations of my, you know, my humanity and compassion for myself, you know, going through sort of the peaks and valleys of it all. And I, I had awakenings very young. And I at this time, I felt too young, I felt like, I'm not ready to be an intuitive healer. I'm too, I was in my early 20s and this was pre-internet. This was pre, you know, social media. So it was, it was, I didn't have a lot of resources to turn to other than some of the leaders and old, you know, the books that, that were out there. And so it was learning. There was a lot of trial and error and fumbling and figuring out how to do it. And, and also stay very, you know, stay very grounded and, and relatable and connected um, throughout the process. But it was a process. <laughs> it's a process, yeah. And then by learning from people like you, those on a similar path can shorten the process. They don't have to go through the same series of bumps that you may have had to go through. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do run trainings and I say that all the time. I'm like, I've just saved you a good 10 years in this teaching. <laughs> all, my, all, all my fumbles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've learned that and had the pain so you don't have to have it all over again. And then how, how do you move from intuiting that something is, say, off in somebody's energy system or in their physical body or maybe their cells into the process of going beyond just recognizing it's there into active healing. How do you, yes, how do you, how do you see, or I say diagnose sometimes, how do you look and see, not in a medical term, um, determine what's there and then take them through the process of healing. So essentially, you know, different people have different clairs. They see, they feel, they hear, they know, and some people are visual. So they see energy and they can see the picture of what's going on. And then the, tr the, the next piece becomes, well, how do I, I see this image and how do I translate what it means or what it what its purpose is or what's needed here and oftentimes that's a process of guiding the individual explaining this is what I'm seeing and it feels like it's something that shouldn't be there anymore how do you feel about clearing this energy and they may say absolutely yes I'm ready to do it most of the time they do 
And so then you guide them into where we are. And I said, seeing some people feel it in where they are, or they have a sense. And so you guide them into where they may feel it in their body and invite them to breathe into that space invite them to connect. The, the second in energy, I'm sure you're aware of this, is with energy work, clearing energy is a combination of breath and awareness. So I can breathe into something, but if I'm not consciously connected to it, I'm not getting at it. I'm not getting to the depth of where it is. And as much as emotions are something that, you know, and, and many times in spiritual work, we want to transcend emotions, but they are absolutely a part of energy clearing and they're part of what we need to feel into and breathe into and 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 start bringing expression to or voice to or breath to to allow that energy to clear through the body and so sometimes it's a matter of letting the person feel and breathe and you know have them choose i they're they're having the reaction or the release i'm i'm letting this go i feel the energy moving through my body and you know sort of out i send it down the grounding cord or however it wants to clear when we come back from a break i'd love to hear some examples of people you did that with and what their stories were and how they things changed for them we'll be going to a break right now you're listening to high energy health my name is dawson church and Wendy's book is called Becoming an Empowered Empath. You can see more about her work at her website, wendyderosa.com. We'll be right back after a break. Dawson Church's award-winning book, Mind to Matter, has been hailed as one of the best science and health books of the decade. Over 400 studies show that your brain has the ability to turn thoughts to things, and that when you use the superpower deliberately, you can create an extraordinary life. Mind to Matter is the science and practice of how our brains create reality, and Dawson is so committed to helping people transform that he's giving copies of the book away free at mindtomatter.com. Claim your free copy at mindtomatter.com now. Imagine your love life, your health, your money, your career, your spiritual path. If you have the ability to turn your dreams into reality, the people who have discovered how to do this are master manifestors. Now you can learn their secrets at mastermanifestor.com. They'll give you a 21-day crash course in intuition, synchronicity, and manifestation. In just seven minutes each day, the experts at mastermanifestor.com will train your brain to be like theirs. mastermanifestor.com there's a completely natural method to help boost your immune system, maybe even up to 113% in a week. If you're interested in saving money without supplements and other expensive remedies, then explore the 7-Day Immunity Booster Program. It includes seven powerful audio programs. Two clinical trials even show that these methods can help increase your body's immunity naturally. So visit StressDump.com and find out how you can boost your immune system. That's StressDump.com. StressDump.com. Imagine having a certified wellness professional at your service 24-7. Whenever you're stressed, anxious, angry, sleepless, or depressed, you get help the moment you need it. You can talk to a compassionate practitioner anytime you want at MyStressSolution.com. In the Stress Solution app, trained experts are standing by when you need them most. Experience a free introductory session at MyStressSolution.com. You never have to face your problems alone. Get instant help at MyStressSolution.com. Helping other people heal is deeply satisfying. Watching a child's pain disappear before your eyes, a loved one calming down after a panic attack, or a veteran recovering from PTSD is a wonderful feeling. Imagine yourself with the skills and confidence to help people every single day in a rewarding career in energy healing. Taught by expert faculty, you'll become skilled in techniques validated in over 1,000 scientific studies. So get certified as an energy psychology professional today at www.newhealer.com. Your first course is free at www.newhealer.com. Hello and welcome back. You're listening to High Energy Health. I am your high energy host, Dawson Church. I love being here and sharing with you and inspiring us all with the amazing healing tools and techniques that are available to us today. So please do listen, please do be aware of them, and then go and practice them. Write them into your calendar, make the time for meditation, make the time for study, and that time for reflection in your life every, every week, every day, meditation certainly, and then time just to take a deep dive at least once a week. I know usually for me that's Saturday morning, 
I'll just get up in the morning, meditate, and then I have a big stack of books next to my chair. I'll start to read. So use these techniques. And there is so much amazing information out there. Applying these things in your life is powerful. I'm also uh, right now working on a new edition of my book, Mind to Matter. You can get a copy of the book at mindtomatter.com. And that is 30 techniques you can use that will help you with your journey. Everything from grounding to EFT tapping, to eco meditation, to uh, time in nature. All of these things have epigenetic effects which dramatically affect your health and your sense of well-being. And you can get a free copy of the book at mind to matter.com. Also, please do leave me a review. We have over a hundred, over a thousand five-star reviews on Amazon. The book has sold over 100,000 copies. I'm so grateful for all those people who've been inspired by it. You can get a free copy or give a free copy to a friend at mindtomatter.com. Also, you can get seven free meditations. And there are all kinds of other resources at that mindtomatter.com, mindtomatter.com website. So go there. And then for more on Wendy's work, go to her website, wendyderosa.com for a copy of her book, Becoming an Empowered Empath, or to learn more about her online work, her courses, and her school. When you talk about guidance and how your guidance has been so important to you in your journey, I'd love to have you share what that looks like to you, how it comes to you, and some examples of the differences made in your life. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's interesting because I had a, my guidance started to open up when I actually had an angel encounter on the street. <laughs> so essentially, I was recovering from a nervous breakdown my, in, when I was 19. And my, I uh, was trying to decide if I leave school, or do I stay for the full semester? And I was de pretty debilitated, or do I forfeit my tuition and leave? And I was walking down the street with my roommate trying to make this decision. And literally, we turned the corner and there's a man on the street wearing a red jacket and he's carrying a ukulele. And he says, can I sing you a song for some spare change? <laughs> and we said, no, that's okay. <laughs> and he says, no, Wendy, you need to hear a song. And he calls me by name. And then he says, we, at this point, up until this point, we had been talking about me moving to Colorado. Now, again, pre-internet, I had, a, I think I saw it in a magazine. You know, I knew nothing about it. So he said, I, he, he said, no, I think you need to hear a song. My name is Arius and I'm going to sing you a song. And he gets down on one knee and he sings me a song that says, home on the range where the buffalo roam. One day you're going to get to Colorado. And he stands up and he says, Wendy, it's not your time to go yet. Hang in there a little bit longer. You're going to get there. And he gives me a kiss on the cheek and he vanishes behind me. And literally the room, my roommate and I look at each other and look back and he is completely gone. And it was so powerful that moment. I felt like in that moment, I was having a divine transmission of healing on the street where all the anxiety I had up until that moment had, had been healed. I mean, it had just lifted from me and I was giddy and I was happy and it, cha it changed so much. And that really was a, it was a pivotal moment. And from there, I felt like there was an awakening and I started to move towards my gift of being a healer and finding a teacher. But ultimately my guidance started to open up when I was hiking a lot in the mountains of Colorado, particularly outside of Boulder and praying and allowing for grace to flow through me. And I, I was really focused on my central channel and purifying my central channel and healing at that de depth level. And all of this, and not all of a sudden, I did this for a year. This was a walking meditation that I did for a year. And all, uh, 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 somewhere halfway, I started, I felt a boom in my chest. I felt my heart open. I felt the resonance of the divine. And I started to connect and hear angels and spirit guides. And I didn't feel, felt benevolent and kind and integrated. It didn't feel like I was going crazy. I mean, it didn't feel like I was hearing voices. It just felt like, like, like there was a, a oneness that was opening to me. And 
And I started to sit with it more. I mean, I meditated. I wrote down a lot. I downloaded a lot of information and material. And and when I started to go into healing, I had private practice. I was in at the time and I could hear guides and angels communicate for the, the clients that, and the experience, you know, and, and, and facilitate what was happening for them. And that same transmission experience that I had on the street where the, the guidance would come in, but there's healing with it was exactly what was happening for clients. Like the information would come through in their words, but it would come with vibratory essence of healing and, and divine energy. And it would, it would shift, it would clear their energy. And, and I still continue, you know, I, I work now, I, I more facilitate the big groups. And so there's, there's that experience in the big group space, but it still is this powerful sort of higher guidance connection and it comes with a frequency of of healing for people. Give us an example of somebody who had that experience and how they changed. So I would say, like I don't know who to pick. There's so many. I have um so I you know I I feel so I run a I run a group right now. I run a monthly healing circle and I every month people say the same thing. They say I can't believe that wasn't just for me, that the information that comes through is so profoundly deep. We're working on a, on the essence of our spiritual evolution. And we're going into deep places in the central channel where we all relate to wounds like betrayal and abandonment and healing disconnection from ourselves. And we might be operating in the world, you know, in those wounds, but when we go into this healing space, it's like, the spirit guides and angels hone in. This is this is this is a pain. This is something that you're you're operating from, and and highlight it. And when they speak it, you know the per, the people in individually, it resonates so deeply, and they're experiencing energetic shifts. And so I just have a whole slew of people, you know, who would say in this moment. I mean, they say it all every month. They say I can't, that last healing was so profoundly shifting. I felt my central channel for the first time. I felt myself drop so deeply into my grounding. I couldn't move for 10 minutes. It was so connected. I felt whatever it is, like I felt my heart in a way I could never feel my heart before, you know, after that, after that session, because we're moving, you know, we're working with such deep, deep, profound central channel healing work. And the energy is really configuring itself to speak to people in the language they need to hear energetically. We're going to come back after a short break. I'm speaking with Wendy DeRosa. You can see more about her work at her website, wendyderosa.com. We'll be right back after a break. Dawson Church's award-winning book, Mind to Matter, has been hailed as one of the best science and health books of the decade. Over 400 studies show that your brain has the ability to turn thoughts to things, and that when you use this superpower deliberately, you can create an extraordinary life. Mind to Matter is the science and practice of how our brains create reality, and Dawson is so committed to helping people transform that he's giving copies of the book away free at mindtomatter.com. Claim your free copy at mindtomatter.com now. Imagine your love life, your health, your money, your career, your spiritual path. If you had the ability to turn your dreams into reality, the people who have discovered how to do this are master manifestors. Now you can learn their secrets at mastermanifestor.com. They'll give you a 21-day crash course in intuition, synchronicity, and manifestation. In just seven minutes each day, the experts at mastermanifestor.com will train your brain to be like theirs. mastermanifestor.com There's a completely natural method to help boost your immune system, maybe even up to 113% in a week. If you're interested in saving money without supplements and other expensive remedies, then explore the 7-Day Immunity Booster Program. It includes seven powerful audio programs. Two clinical trials even show that these methods can help increase your body's immunity naturally. So visit StressDump.com and find out how you can boost your immune system. That's StressDump.com. StressDump.com. Imagine having a certified wellness professional at your service 24-7. Whenever you're stressed, anxious, angry, sleepless, or depressed, you get help the moment you need it. You can talk to a compassionate practitioner anytime you want at MyStressSolution.com. In the Stress Solution app, 
Trained experts are standing by when you need them most. Experience a free introductory session at MyStressSolution.com. You never have to face your problems alone. Get instant help at MyStressSolution.com. Helping other people heal is deeply satisfying. Watching a child's pain disappear before your eyes, a loved one calming down after a panic attack, or a veteran recovering from PTSD is a wonderful feeling. Imagine yourself with the skills and confidence to help people every single day and a rewarding career in energy healing. Taught by expert faculty, you'll become skilled in techniques validated in over 1,000 scientific studies. So get certified as an energy psychology professional today at www.newhealer.com. Your first course is free at www.newhealer.com. Come back to High Energy Health. I'm your host, Dawson Church. Each week on the show, we look at the leading edge of health, wellness, healing, and happiness, and all the things you can do to dramatically improve your level of all of those things. I encourage you to do those things, do those things that really help move the needle for you. There are so many of them now, and I know we talk with guests about what they are. I encourage you to practice them. In my book, Mind to Matter, I cover 30 things you can do, grounding, time in nature, meditation, EFT tapping, all of these te wonderful techniques we have nowadays that really, really shift your energy and then shift your health. So go ahead and check out mindtomatter.com, which is where you can get a copy of the book for free, as well as seven meditations that accompany those. We're now doing MRI studies on, on those meditations. We're finding they produce functional connectivity changes in the brain within 30 days. So in 30 days, your brain is functioning differently if you just use some of the tools I talk about on the show. For more on Wendy's work, go to her website, wendyderosa.com. That's wendyderosa.com or schoolofintuitivestudies.com. That's where you can find out more about her educational programs. And again, her new book is called Becoming an Empowered Empath. Wendy, I'm sure you've seen many people who had those shifts in your groups have shifts in their health as well, not just in their energy. And I'd love to have you share one or two examples of people who went through those dramatic outer manifestations of well-being as well. Absolutely. I, I Just recently, I had a student and we were going into a, a, a deep training, a deep healing training. And prior to the training, she had a tumor in her her uh, lungs or her heart area, her chest area, essentially. And she had scheduled this follow-up visit after the training consciously. She decided, I'm going to see what happens after I do this training. And we, and we had this, she, I didn't know this, she told me later, but we did this deep dive healing, lots of healing in the body, lots of clearing in our, in our system. And then, um, and then she went into her follow up and they couldn't find it it was completely gone and she just told she just told me two days ago about this and I we, we were just celebrating how powerful that was even and even last night I got a text from another dear friend client who I talked to still and I did a clearing for her yesterday and she was having um respiratory issues and she she sent me a message saying, in case you ever have any doubt about what you do, or how amazing, you know, this work is, I just want to let you know, I have no symptoms at all. I mean, this was this, I, this is one of many, 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 many people. I, we, we see this in energy healing. Yeah, that's powerful. And the leverage that energy has over matter is remarkable. And that when you work at the energy level, you often see dramatic things happening at the level of matter as well. I want to also talk about another subject you mentioned in your, in your book. I was so glad to see you talking about the whole issue of racial healing, because this is something that is, is a powerful part of our society now. You talk about how there's intergenerational trauma, there's inherited racial trauma, and you really focus on this as, as an element of the healing process. Go ahead and share your insights about that. Yeah, so you know, I, I am very passionate about healing in the lower chakras of the body, and so much so that 
it, it, I want to bridge this into the pandemic and 2020 and everything that's going on that surfaced for us on that global issue, global level, which is that I, I joke about this, but I, I, it's kind of a good uh, uh, metaphor. I think of you know, the earth mama saying to all of us, you're grounded for a year and you're going to have to sit in your root chakra and think about this, <laughs> think about this world. And, 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 and as we did that, it was, you know, it was, we had to feel into racial injustice. We had to feel into our, you know, gender, gender-based issues. We had to deal with, or we had to feel, really deal, we're dealing with climate change. I mean, any number of these issues that have surfaced, I have had a profound awakening for myself around personal responsibility and my own biases and parts in racial in the in the racial conversation. I mean, I am married interracially. I have an interracial. I have a biracial child. Um, and at the same time, that doesn't excuse me. That doesn't let me off the hook for my work, for my work in, in my own working through my own white privilege and my impact on people, marginalized people, people of color. And so what I'm aware of when it comes down to the energy body and our healing work is that we all have a part of of the racial conversation to heal on our chakra level, whether we have been oppressed, whether oppressed, you know, people who have been oppressed are holding what they're holding, uh, it, you know, their version of it in their root chakra or my version of it in my root chakra. I have to feel into my shame. I have to feel into, you know, my blind spots and my biases and where, where I've been blindfolded and my history of origin and how that impacted people of color and you know and 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 people of color will have to will, will also have their story of oppression in their body and energetically it's our work I, I mean i personally feel like it's my work i'll speak for myself it's my my work to take personal responsibility for my part in it and to do my healing work and to keep trying to do better in this world around around diversity and civil rights and you know equality you know and and, and it, you know it, it it it's race it's gender it's it's sort of everywhere i think that we're experiencing a bit of a dismantling of what i consider sort of a patriarchal system that's it's messy it's messy right now but i i do believe that we're, we're in many ways, the consciousness is rising and we do have to see these parts. Love and light isn't, doesn't mean just for certain populations. You know, we do need to do our, our deeper um, healing work around race and racial, racial justice. Yeah, there's both the energetic work and the invisible work and the personal work and the mental and spiritual work inwardly. And then there's also the outer work, the actual stuff we do in the outside world to, in, in Judaism, there's a wonderful word called tikkun, T-I-K-K-U-N, and it means to repair the world, to, to repair things, to fix things. And so you don't just go and do the work in consciousness, you go out there and do the work outwardly as well. And I think that that dimension has really been missing from a lot of the uh, the energy medicine community. And I've been really encouraging our practitioners and our, our community to go in there, not just work energetically, but also be doing the activism, doing the, the outer work to do that, that, that repair. We're going to go to a break right now. Please stay tuned. You're listening to High Energy Health. My name is Dawson Church. For more on Wendy's work, go to her website, Wendy derosa.com. We'll be right back after a break. Dawson Church's award-winning book, Mind to Matter, has been hailed as one of the best science and health books of the decade. Over 400 studies show that your brain has the ability to turn thoughts to things, and that when you use the superpower deliberately, you can create an extraordinary life. Mind to Matter is the science and practice of how our brains create reality, and Dawson is so committed to helping people transform that he's giving copies of the book away free at mindtomatter.com. Claim your free copy at mindtomatter.com now. Imagine your love life, your health, your money, your career, your spiritual path. If you have the ability to turn your dreams into reality, the people who have discovered how to do this are master manifestors. Now you can learn their secrets at mastermanifestor.com. 
They'll give you a 21-day crash course in intuition, synchronicity, and manifestation. In just 7 minutes each day, the experts at MasterManifestor.com will train your brain to be like theirs. MasterManifestor.com There's a completely natural method to help boost your immune system, maybe even up to 113% in a week. If you're interested in saving money without supplements and other expensive remedies, then explore the 7-Day Immunity Booster Program. It includes seven powerful audio programs. Two clinical trials even show that these methods can help increase your body's immunity naturally. So visit StressDump.com and find out how you can boost your immune system. That's StressDump.com. StressDump.com. Imagine having a certified wellness professional at your service 24-7. Whenever you're stressed, anxious, angry, sleepless, or depressed, you get help the moment you need it. You can talk to a compassionate practitioner anytime you want at MyStressSolution.com. In the Stress Solution app, trained experts are standing by when you need them most. Experience a free introductory session at MyStressSolution.com. You never have to face your problems alone. Get instant help at MyStressSolution.com. Helping other people heal is deeply satisfying. Watching a child's pain disappear before your eyes, a loved one calming down after a panic attack, or a veteran recovering from PTSD is a wonderful feeling. Imagine yourself with the skills and confidence to help people every single day and a rewarding career in energy healing. Taught by expert faculty, you'll become skilled in techniques validated in over 1,000 scientific studies. So get certified as an energy psychology professional today at www.newhealer.com. Your first course is free at www.newhealer.com. Come back to high energy health. By being here today, by listening to the show, you are making a statement. That statement is, I care about me. I care about my spiritual health, my mental health, my emotional well-being, because by filling your mind, filling your environment with positive media like the show, and not, say, spending your time glued to negative media, of which there is plenty, you are saying, I care enough about me to give myself a beautiful energy environment. So I encourage you to do that. Turn on music that really uplifts and inspires you. Turn on news that uplifts and inspires you. I know I, I, I look at a news channel every, every day called the Good News Network, and there's all this good news happening that the mainstream media does not report upon. So fill your mind with positive media like the show. We have a huge archive of hundreds of shows. Go and check out some of the, the past ones and do what it takes to give yourself a healthy energy environment. And then meditate. Meditate every day. Learn tapping so you can de-stress yourself. If you want to learn about other techniques, get my book, Bliss Brain, at blissbrain.com. There are eight meditations in Bliss Brain. And again, those are really powerful at shifting people. And as we do research on those meditations, we're seeing really radical shifts in the brain in only the first month or so. So blissbrain.com has eight meditations and will help you learn a technique, an evidence-based technique that really shifts the brain and shifts the body quickly. So use these tools and techniques and give yourself that healthy energy environment. For more on Wendy's work, go to her website, wendyderosa.com. And if you're struggling with this whole question of being a sensitive person in a world not really built for sensitive people, check out her book, Becoming an empowered empath, becoming an empowered empath. So Wendy, that empowered empath, what does he or she do to help navigate a world that's really not built for people like us? So one one, uh, practice is actually pretty similar to what you probably teach and offer also, which is meditating and tuning in to ourselves. And I, I, th- there's the practice that we do for ourselves that ends up working out in the world because we're implementing it in our own self-care every day. One of the, uh, f- so it's a meditation practice, but it's grounding. It's, it's visualizing your grounding cord. It's connecting your grounding cord as a, as a tree trunk, not just a thin cord, but a tree trunk that <laughs> hugs the hips, extends into the a earth. A redwood tree. <laughs> a redwood tree, something sturdy. <laughs> and it extends into the earth and it, it helps bring, again, us in contact with our 
our lower body. That's a very powerful tool to be <clears throat> implementing inside ourselves. I also really find this practice to be a game changer, which is that we are typically a forward facing society. We are in our front body. We have to engage in the world. It's part of our ego consciousness, even though ego is not in terribly, it's not terrible. It's not, you know, it's part of our humanity to be in the front body. And we, and empaths in particular, engage a lot through their front body, but we also have a back body. And through the back body, we can connect to a shower of grace that fuels the back sides of the chakras. And when we do that, when we engage it, then our front body can come back a little bit more into balance and we're a little more centered so that when we're showing up in the world, we are backed by spirit. We're backed by grace. We're backed by flow or source, sourcing. And that is an absolute shift. When you are, if you are a teacher and you are standing in front of an audience or excuse me, your students, and there are kids running around <laughs> and you need to lean back and allow yourself to source so that you're not using all of your personal energy. It's a powerful shift. Or if you're a doctor or a therapist or a frontline worker, it's absolutely powerful to lean back into that awareness of, I have to take care of myself. And when we allow light to come in through the back body, it is the vibration of love. And when it comes into self, it's self-love. And so that is a form of self-love to do that so that you're not, again, giving away so much of your personal energy and losing boundaries and getting fatigued in your front body. That's a powerful analogy to step into that source in the back of the body. Also, the back of the brain works the same way. It handles all of our automatic functions. We don't think about it very often. We tend to be in our frontal brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. instead most of the time yeah 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 and, and so what does your personal daily practice look like so i i do a mantra based meditation uh twice a day so it's a 20 minute one it's not tm it's a different one um and it's i sit and i wake up in the morning and i sit in my uh, meditation and I just re I relax with the meditate with the mantra, but it's I, I wish I could say it's an absolute still practice. My body sort of moves, you know. There's movement that happens in the meditation. I'm not necessarily initiating it consciously. It's just um, you know it's pure. I think it's purification. I think there's prana, life force energy moving through my system. Um, and there's a state, you know, there's a, just a zone <laughs> that I'll go into. And then sometimes I'll journal afterwards. Um, you know, if there's messages or information or anything coming through. I love that. I do the same thing. And I used to have a misery journal. I'd write down all the <laughs> challenges and har horrible things I was going through in my life. Then one day I thought, you know, oh, I don't really care about these things. I'll forget about them soon enough. I'm going to write down my insights. And so now I have an insight journal mm. and uh, it's just full of all the breakthroughs and wonderful ideas and great in, in inspiration and intuition that comes through. So very, very different to journal that way than the old way. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that, that it's a whole journal dedicated <laughs> to insights. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, I used to have two journals. One was the misery journal, one was the insight journal. And then after a while, the misery journal just seemed like so unimportant that I quit keeping it maybe 10, 15 years ago. And, <laughs> oh, <that's wonderful. laughs> and then so only the insight and happy journal. So we can choose to shift our focus that way. And uh, again, that's, that's just using our consciousness to make a conscious choice of how to be. So what closing thoughts and words would you like to just share from the heart about your experience and from your heart to those, the heart of those listening. You know, I think the one piece I want to leave for anyone who's really resonating with, with the empathic experience is that it, I understand it can feel overwhelming and 
empaths are really, really are leading the way right now in our evolution of consciousness, I believe. And it, it, it's, it, we're becoming more heart centered. We are becoming more conscientious of other people. It's, it is infiltrating into business and how we're, you know, engaging with people and we want connected conversations and vulnerability matters and, you know, all of this empathy matters. And we, and we're start those conversations are opening up and there's more permission for us to be in that power. And, and I, you know, I think the book is going to help with anything that relates to clearing energy in the body to help you be in that power that you do have, that intuitive empathic power that you do have. But you have a gift and I would, I would encourage you to, to, to really turn to it and, and really honor that this is a powerful um, aspect of intuition in you. And of course, when we do share that, even in business meeting or professional relationship, the surprising thing is often it turns out that other people are having the same experience. No one's talking about that experience, but they're all having that same experience. And then it opens up the space for everyone to be like that and that to be the common experience for everyone in that group. So it's, it's really powerful to validate who we are, be that publicly, openly and honestly, and show that part of ourselves. And then it just sparks that same energy of vulnerability and closeness and openness to everyone else. Wendy, it's been such a joy to connect with you in the heart. I know we said off the air that we'd both be at Omega, the Energy Medicine Conference in uh, August in Omega. So please check that out at eomega.org. And um, I just look forward to this whole movement of energy healing becoming normal, and part of what everyone assumes is uh, a, a really essential part of the healing journey as it is for all of us. So thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Again, my name is Dawson Church. You've been listening to High Energy Health. Immerse yourself in love, immerse yourself in self-love, and I will see you again in a week. Thank you.